everyone, Tim here. Welcome back to another truck camper video. Today I'm gonna to be talking more about the build process of my truck camper, specifically gonna be talking about the water system. So I spent quite a bit of time thinking about how to do a water system on my camper. I was trying to figure out if I should just have like some five gallon jugs that I just bring with, with me, or if I want a fully integrated system with like an electric pump and even a heater or something in between. In the end, I ended up just replicating what the camper already had, which was a simple water tank inside the camper, permanently mounted, but with some fill ports from the outside so that I can just use like a garden hose to fill it up. I think it holds about 12 gallons or so, and then I have a simple hand pump. So that's what this video is going to be about. It's gonna be about installing that water system, getting all the lines run, getting the sink hooked up, and then finishing off, kind of closing it out in the galley. Before I even start, I wanna say I was really fortunate to get the water tank I ended up putting in my camper donated to me from a friend that I met on the internet. My original tank actually had some screw holes in it. I guess the previous owner had installed, I don't know what, maybe some part of a new cabinet or something, and accidentally put a couple screws into the side of the plastic water tank. Obviously, a water tank can't have holes in it pretty problematic. And so on a website that I do a lot of discussion about my truck camper, which is wanderthewest.com, that's where I got into all of these vintage truck campers and specifically four wheel campers. A guy that was also redoing his vintage camper had a tank identical to mine and he was actually super generous to just donate it to me and just gave it to me. And so that's the tank I actually put in. So huge thanks to you, you know who you are. Um, really appreciate the tank. It's, it's awesome to get things like that. The other thing I want to say about that community I just talked about, this Wander the West, I'll make sure I put a link to my build page down there. Again, I've probably mentioned this in a few videos previous, but before I even started making videos about my truck camper, I did an entire build series where I actually wrote up text and had photos to follow along for probably about a year of my build before I started doing videos. So if you're ever interested in kind of the backstory of my camper, you can go check that out. You might find it pretty interesting. Someday I am going to recap all of that in a video discussion like this. Why I brought that up again though is that community again really, really, really supports me in these videos and a lot of other things I do in terms of the truck camper. And if you remember a while back in my galley build, I actually had some microphone problems with this GoPro and asked if anybody wanted to help me out and sponsor a new microphone for my videos, it would really help improve everything. And someone from that community stepped up and actually sent me a check to buy a new microphone. I've ordered it. This video does not have that awesome new microphone, but so you will see better production quality of these videos. And just a huge, huge thanks to that person that was kind enough to think that these videos brought value enough to actually send me a check. So thank you so much to you. And if anyone else is ever interested in something like that, of course, reach out to me. There's a million ways you can support this channel, either financially, but also just sharing it with other people is a great support. So whatever you wanna do, if you're finding my video series helpful or valuable in any way, shape or form, reach out to me and feel free to express that in whatever you see fit. So without any more discussion about the communities and things like that, let's get right into this water build series. So the first thing I had to do was put the water tank into the camper behind the galley. Gotta secure that tank. Got some chains, just random chains, some screws, some washers. Should work out pretty good. So after the tank was secured down in place so that even when it was full, it's got quite a bit of weight and it wouldn't rock around too much, it was a time to attach the hoses to the water tank. 
So the water tank in, I think, any RV usually has three ports. It's gonna have a fill port, which is gonna be the top. That's gonna allow you to add water into your system. There's two styles out there. There's gravity fill and pressurized fill. Gravity fill literally just means that you're gonna use like a garden hose to fill it up. Pressurized fill means that maybe you're actually gonna um, securely screw a hose to your system, maybe that you would find like an RV park or something like that. I just have a gravity fill. So however I want to, I can just fill my thing up either with a bucket or with a hose or whatever it may be. Then there's two other ports. There is one port that's gonna be at the bottom of the tank, uh, the lowest point, and that's going to be what goes to your sink. And there's a third port, which is like a breather port, and that's gonna be at the very top of your tank and that's just gonna be for overflow and to also let air enter your tank as you take water out. And so I actually don't have a ton of fantastic footage of that, but here's what it does look like, what I can show. Now it's time for the fill ports. Here's the old fill port. You can see it's all janky. I was just gonna paint this, but I figured I'll just buy a new one. Uh, it's like a cream color, they don't make a white. Gotta figure out how to get it in. I realized I probably should have put this in before I put the uh, galley in. So I bet you it's gonna be difficult. Guess what? It was really difficult. And because of that, I actually have almost no footage of it. When a task gets a little cumbersome to complete, I tend to put the camera down. I'll try not to do that to keep the YouTube channel nice and healthy in the, in the future. I just had to like weave the tube in there and it was a pain in the buns to get my hands in there and get everything sorted out. But then it was time to put the what I call the breather port in real quick. And so again, that's the port at the very top of the tank with a hose that runs down outside of the camper so that uh, overflow can go somewhere besides onto the ground inside my camper and ruin my floor. And also so that air can flow in as I take water out of the system. So here's the breather port real quick. So then I had all three hoses hooked up to the camper. It was time to test them out. I had a faucet from when I bought the camper that I had spray paint to freshen it up a little bit and then tried to use. Uh, but unfortunately, it did not pump water. I guess the seals were broken inside of it or something after 30 years, uh, the, the ding dang $30 faucet crapped out on me. So I went ahead and bought a new faucet and also I had to buy a new drain for the sink. And so without any more discussion, that's what this is. I'm using this plumber's putty to put my sink back together. got this new sink too. I had an old one, um, but it leaked. So that was annoying. I even painted it like to freshen it up and stuff, but it didn't end up working out. So just gonna install this real quick, then put the sink in and then water system will be done. Too 
we had to move the handle in the front because there wasn't enough room back there. So you can see the sink and faucet were installed and operational. It was looking so good. I did mention real briefly there that I had a little bit of trouble fitting the new faucet behind the sink. We had to rotate it a little bit, but everything worked out in the end. Also notice I didn't show too much of, but we were using the what's called plumber's putty. Let me grab it for you actually. Got it right here using this plumber's putty stuff on all the seals and like to put the sink in and things like that. It seems to be working out pretty nice so far. My understanding is this is different than normal like caulk in that this never gets sticky. It just makes a nice water seal. Final thing we had to do was run the drain out of the camper. So that's for gray water. It just runs to a hose that goes outside the camper and I can then attach another hose to that and maybe run it under the truck. I can run it into a bucket if I'm in an area that I can't just be dumping on the ground. Uh, there's all sorts of things I can do. No gray water tank in the camper, keeping it pretty simple. So actually right there you saw the fourth port of the water tank that I forgot to mention earlier, which is the drain port for the water tank. So not the drain for the sink for like gray water, but the drain for the water tank if I wanted to like empty it out say in the winter. And what I did with that port actually was ran it outside of the truck camper, which it already was, but then put on a little simple valve and that way I can easily fill up a water bottle or fill up a pop or anything like that when I'm camping if my water tanks full, which it will be most of the time, just a simple turn of the knob and I have fresh water running off the side of my truck. So I was actually really proud of that little addition that I made and I think it will be extremely handy for a lot of things coming forward. With the water tank and the sink and the faucet all finished up, I could finally close it back off in the galley. And so when I had originally designed the galley in previous videos, I had actually made the kind of walls of the cabinets that will enclose all of that uh, utility area where the propane tank is, where the water tank is, things like that. And I finally could just put that in and start making the galley look like a nice finished product. So that's how we're gonna finish out this video with just a couple of clips of the galley and then I'll be back to you to uh, tell you what's coming up next in my next YouTube videos. rounds out the water system project. I'm really happy with how it all came out. It adds a lot more functionality to the camper. Having that water both inside with the faucet and again with that drain uh, on the outside has been really helpful on some of the camping trips we've been on recently. Progress on the truck camper build has certainly slowed down, mostly because it's usable and I'm actually out in the summer using the truck camper, going camping, having fun with it. Still, of course, finishing off different projects such as the galley doing some work on that, building some cabinetry and things like that. Really fun, slightly difficult, but in a very good way. Uh, that's starting to come out really well. So actually the, the bit you just saw, I now have some doors to put on it, some shelves. All that's getting stained right now and that'll be installed soon with a video coming soon after. I also need to do a lot of sewing for the cushions and for some curtains and things like that. So we have sewing projects on deck 
And then, of course, just continuing to use the camper. We have a really big trip coming up uh, the second week of August. Be driving from the Front Range of Colorado up into Montana. Should be an absolute beautiful trip. We're gonna spend some time in the Tetons, up in Paradise Valley in Montana. Some camping, some at a home. Uh, should be really good. As always, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a little bit more about my water system. Maybe it gave you some insight in how to do your water system in whatever vehicle or camper or trailer that you're working on. If you have any questions at all, always just drop a comment. I get right back to you. I've also put a parts list down below. Go check that out if you're curious. And let me know just in general what you think. Thank you so much for watching. Like always, please consider uh, liking and subscribing and also sharing this with your friends. Again, I'm always trying to grow the channel. It's just encouraging to me that people are finding it useful. I've actually had a lot of that. I had uh, some people come down the other day and actually I sold them some thread they needed for a camping project, said they had been completely following along my sewing project videos. And so when I hear stuff like that, it's really motivated to get back in the garage, work on the camera, and also work on these videos. So thank you to everyone that has contacted me and said that it's been helpful. It's really awesome to hear. Last thing I'll say is if you haven't noticed, I am trying to do a weekly release schedule. Saturday mornings is when I drop my newest videos. I try to do it at least every Saturday morning. If I have extra videos, I'll sneak them in throughout the week as well, but usually about one per week is what I can do. With that, definitely consider subscribing. And also you can turn on notifications. A lot of people don't know that. There's a little bell next to it. So if you wanna know when that comes out exactly, or if I do put another one out that's not on a Saturday, make sure you hit that notification because it'll help you find my videos quick list. Thanks again for watching. Thanks for all the support that I've gotten recently and we'll see you in the next video.